Manorie Park nestles in the heart of the Leicestershire countryside. The road racing circuit was opened in 1956. This exciting venue was developed from an earlier pony track in the grounds of the former Kirkby Mallory Hall. An inclined extension, including the hairpin at Shaw's Corner, forms the most challenging section of the 1.35 mile circuit. Only the coach house and nearby outbuildings remain from the original estate complex. In front of this range, Mallory Park pays tribute to some of its former heroes. The group includes Colin Chapman, who we see here when Lotus entered Mallory's first Formula One race in 1962. The Lotus name is remembered also. Indeed, their sports racing the cars race raced the early and meetings. Coming into the lead at Shores on lap one is Ashdown and the Team Lotus, followed by Tom Dixon and Briley. We will introduce you to some of the great names of the era, Ken Walton, Bob Gerrard, and circuit founder Clive Wormleyton. Jim Clark was one of Mallory's most famous early visitors. Border Reavers, Lister Jaguar. Here it comes, Clark, Jimmy Clark the driver. Later he would return with the Lotus Elite, However, the great man needed all his skill and courage to pass Chris Meek, whose name would become engraved in history as the man that rescued Mallory Park. Second, uh, second lap round, Clark in the Lotus Elite, followed by Meek in the Elva Courier, and Ferguson in the Elva Courier. Mike Halewood won the first Formula 5000 international race in 1971, driving a Team Surtees TS8. Mallory Park knew John Surtees long before he became a constructor. His record here is probably surpassed by none. As a motorcyclist, he won Mallory's first major event, the 1958 Race of the Year. This great event created the tradition for today's motorcycle races. Surtees would make a triumphant return in 1962 to win that first Formula One race for Lola. In January 1999, a great local hero was honoured, Roger Clark. Former co-driver Tony Mason recalls those early days with Roger. The whole place brings back memories. I used to come here to Mallory with Roger quite a lot. First laps of the unlimited sports car race, production sports car race, filmed from Shores as they all come in here, all in a bunch. Mallory Park has many treasured memories over the years. The charm of the 1965 Motor Apprentices soapbox race and the evergreen passion for vintage cars. You can see this and much more, all in the nostalgia video of Mallory Park, the friendly circuit. It was uh, very exciting, brand new circuit and the uh, of, uh, string and oil drums keeping the spectators from the, uh, the traffic. It's all caught into Riley having built up a considerable lead in, in race two. He's swinging into the bottom corner past the straight now. I should think he's at least oh, a thousand yards in front of number 45, Stokes in the Riley, followed by another Riley number 96.
Gee drifting into the corner here, and a whole bunch of them coming around in one fell sweep. Just listen to them. The airfield at Gamston in Nottinghamshire lies west of Ratford, adjacent to the A1 Trunk Road. Today, a modern private airport utilises the former runways of the World War II airfield, which was opened in 1942. Between 1948 and 1952, the western side of the site was used as a motorsport circuit. Zero three numbers, out onto the private road, where we've got the um, old control tower and workshops on the mm -hmm. left. We've come round the corner where there are new buildings for warehousing. Um, uh, it rather, it won't be possible for me to give you any commentary because we've found that the noise is far too great. So we'll just have to uh, let the car speak for itself. The opening event in 1948 was a sprint with cars timed between two fixed points against the clock. From 1949, frequent race meetings were organised. of the meeting and it looks to me as though this Dana Panard saloon looks like being a, a very very close finisher in this event. This place is from what I can see here. I'm not quite sure who's leading but it looks like an MG. I think it's Panels MG. Yes it is, it's Panels MG leading with an Austin 7 following. Dana Panard in third position followed by a Lotus and another Austin. Finish of race one, the 750 cc race. And uh, very nice indeed it is to see that Dick Pannell, a member of the Nottingham Sports Car Club, driving an unsupercharged uh, 750cc MG, gets the chequered flag as number one. Closely followed, or reasonably closely followed, by uh, Austin. And in third place, you can just see it coming up now, the Dyna Pannard Saloon, driven by Wadsworth. Number 19 is third. And we have uh, two more cars bringing up there. One in Austin and one a Lotus, I believe. There's quite a number of cars being hurriedly prepared, and I should say I should describe the whole place as an absolute hive of activity. I mean, there's a varying, very, very. The paddock very, very consisted of a former double-headed dispersal in the centre of the circuit. A typical triangular circuit was utilised, incorporating one of the shorter runways and two interconnecting sections of perimeter track. Very, very good 
Stewart Field and picking them out 20 or 30 cars actually racing in this event now. And they're all coming up to the starting line, losing out the line, they'll get the flag and then they're off. XK Jaguar driver Derek Truman was also responsible for the Nottingham Sports Car Club's film unit. Derek Truman in the Jaguar, he's really motoring very, very fast indeed. This, this car really is going well today. The other founder was Pat Stilley, who recorded many contemporary interviews with leading personalities of the day. Very nice to welcome you here to Gamson, Mr. Parnell. Uh, we consider you, you know, our premier motor racing driver. What do you think of the circuit today? Well, it's much improved since the last time I was here. When yes. I was here last time, I think you put a lot of work in it since then because there was a lot of loose stones in it. Yes. I think it would need a lot of labour to uh, get it away. Yes. yes, it was a bit dodgy. Famous ERA engine, and the driver is standing with me here, Mr. Joe Ashmore. Now, Mr. Ashmore, this is the first time I believe you've been up at Gamston. It is. Uh, now, this motor car. Is it correct when I say that this is the ex bearer car that he beat Reg Parnell with in Belfast just after the war? Yes. Uh, it's his standard trim, I believe, with Larry James and Supercharger. Is there, are there any other special points about the car that you could tell us? No, it's, uh, it's a very good car, but it's going a bit awkward this morning, unfortunately. Oh. But I think we shall remedy that before we actually take off. I see. What has been the trouble? Can you give us any idea? Oh, plugs and carburation, getting the carburation right. I see. Of course, the atmosphere today is very humid. Uh, that may have had probably some effect, do you think? Possibly. Yes. That usually is the trouble, actually. Yes. But, uh, have you taken any uh, any lap times with the motor whilst you've been uh, practicing? No. no. And you're just taking part in the run around the Formula Lube That's event, right. I see. Well, we uh, we hope that you will get your carburetion all right and the car does perform quite satisfactorily. Well, we've done a lot to assist British uh, racing in this country. Reg and I and my brother with, uh, with the stable of, of uh, cars. The stable of cars that we ran. We've been a lot of trouble trying to get a driver to get the Mercedes yes. down to. Um, Surely, because a few times. Have you? Yes. Yes. Well, I can assure you that uh, the Nottingham Car Club is, is, is very pleased to welcome people like yourself and, uh, and Red Parnell here because it certainly uh, it helps a lot. We get bigger attendances and the bigger names we get, the more people we exactly. get here and the more we can do in our end little race. It seems quite a nice little circuit. I've only been around it a few times, but it seems quite a nice little circuit. And I should think you've uh, had every success in making a success of it. Well, thank you very much. Mm. And thank you very much for also for giving us these few brief minutes mm -hmm. on the film. We've got a shot of, a, of, a, of an Allard sports car, and with it I have a very famous person with me today, Mr. Sidney Allard. Uh, this is the first time you've been up at Gamson, Mr. Allard, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Well, what do you think of the circuit as a whole? It'll be very nice if it dries up. Yes, well, that's the trouble today, isn't it? Slippery at the moment. Yes. Well, as you know, the Nottingham Car Club held the first meeting here in uh, Easter, in March, and it poured the rain all day. Right. We thought we'd have a bit better luck today, but it doesn't look too hopeful, does it? Well, we like good weather on all good bank holiday, don't we? Well, we all will. We'll try and hope this will come along. Anyway, how's the car going? Well, the present moment's not going too well. Oh, what's the no trouble? Why? I don't know, I'm just missing on one cylinder. Oh, dear. We've got seven left, but it isn't really good enough. Well, that's one thing with a matter like this. If, you, if you're only firing on four, you're firing on as many yes. as some people are, aren't you? Quite right, quite right. Well, have you, have you taken lap times today at all? Uh, no, I don't think we have, as a matter of fact. I've yeah. probably done a complete lap. I've almost gone out each time and come in again. I see. And what particular event are you entered for? We're in the sports car. It's the unlimited, the unlimited sports, sports car race, race against yeah. the Jaguars and That's what it. have you. Yes. Well, uh, we hope you do get the car going all right, but you have a very successful day. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, too. Early motorsport promotion was by the Nottingham Sports Car Club. The other operating club was the Sheffield and Helmshire Motor Club. Here we are again, again for the Whitsuntide meeting. The weather looks as though it's going to hold up a bit better than it did at Easter, doesn't it? Well, we're certainly hoping it will, although it's very cloudy. It has been a beautiful weekend up until today. Yes, everybody uh, was hoping that the weather would be good enough today for, well, as good as it was on Saturday anyway. Yes, well, of course, it was good on Saturday, it was, yeah, but yes. unfortunately it's changed now. Yes, but still, never mind. Anyway, I believe we've got some quite well-known people competing today. Yes, there's uh, Chilito who's got his Riley here. Yeah. How's it going? It's going very well, thank you, after a lot of trouble. Yes, well it went very well at the Easter meeting here, despite yes. the shocking weather. <laughs> you did manage to get second place in the Nottingham Trophy, yes, didn't you? Yes. 
Uh, this is rather an interesting motor car, I believe. Didn't it originally belong to Freddie Dixon? Yes, it did. One of the team cars, I believe. One of the rally team cars. Yes. It came from Freddie Dixon, then it went to Cuthbert Harrison. No, I think Bob Gerrard had it. Oh, Bob had it, did he? Yes. Well, it certainly motors very well. Uh, you have done your practice laps today, haven't you? Yes, yes. Well, how did it go around? It's going very well, considering. We only finished Sunday, Sunday evening. Did you really? Yes. Well, we hope that you'll have a very successful meeting. Stokes with the... Um, Supercharged Alta. Supercharged Alta. Yes. Miles Martin has brought in the RA along. Yes. And of course we have Richardson who is rather making it, I think it's more or less his own venue at the moment. Yes, he did very well here at Easter, despite the very bad, bad weather, didn't he? But we have the cars lining up for the big race of the day, the Gamston Challenge race for the Sheffield Trophy. The faster cars include Miles Martin's ERA, uh, the Porcel Maserati, which is uh, being driven by J.B. Green, Richardson's RRA, which won the Nottingham Trophy here at, in April, in, uh, at Easter, Tony Booker in the 1100cc and supercharged Cooper, Gordon Shalito Riley, and here we are, off for the start of the Sheffield Telegraph Challenge Trophy race. Everybody's away except for Riley, number 70, which has been left on the line, driven by Richard. Here we are, Nottingham Challenge Race, and Tony Booker in the 1100cc Cooper has just taken the lead from Miles Martin, the ERA. He's drifting this corner beautifully, followed by the ERA, followed by Richardson's RRA. The fifth lap, the fifth lap has started, and Tony Booker in his 1100cc Cooper is building up quite a commanding lead from Miles Martin in the 1.5-litre supercharged ERA, who is closely followed by Richardson's RRA. Uh, unfortunately, there have been quite a few retirements in this race. Booker, who was leading at one time, has retired. Here we have Peter Clark driving his Lee Francis engine single-seater HRG. Here we have Gordon Shalito's two-litre unsupercharged Riley, followed by Heath's 1100cc Cooper. Martin, uh, in the old independently sprung ERA, who is leading this event, comes into the bottom hairpin. Richardson in the RRA, who is in second position. Also in the Riley, who took third position in this Sheffield Telegraph race. And the old ERA of Miles Martin, which won it. Uh, this is Richards in the 1100cc Riley. Here we join an inter-club challenge. Between the Nottingham Sports Car Club and the Sheffield and Hallamshire Club. The starter has got his flag up. The cars are all ready. They're off. This is going to be a very, very exciting race indeed. And a very, very keen one too. Trim is in the lead. End of lap one with Derek Truman in the XK leading for Nottingham Car Club, followed by Pilkington, uh, Jaguar XK for the Sheffield Club, and a whole bunch of cars behind them. They're both all motoring down here at, at a rapid rate of knots, as you can see. Dalton MG, Shipside MG, a couple of Heelys, another XK Jaguar, and the Jarrett Jupiter, and Bolton's Alta. Lap three in the challenge race between Nottingham and Sheffield clubs. Derek Truman is still holding a very good lead. And a Nottingham member, Howard, in an XK Jaguar, has moved up into second position. Scrag, also of Nottingham, on an XK Jaguar, has passed Pilkington and taken third position. These boys really are motoring now, and there's no, mis no messing about it, believe you me. John Dalton, the ex-Phillips MG, is challenging Ruddock of Sheffield very hard, followed by the Heelys and, and the MGs of Shipside and Edwards. A colossal race. Uh, House, also of Nottingham, has, has passed Eric Truman of the Nottingham Club as well in the X game. They're both going absolutely flat out down the straight here towards the start. They must be doing something on approaching over 100 miles an hour down here. Third position is still held by Scrag on the Nottingham Club on XK, followed by Pilkington, the first Sheffield man, also on an XK. Of the finish of this challenge race between Nottingham and Sheffield Hallamshire clubs, House of the Nottingham Club wins with the XK Jaguar. Uh, second man home, Derek Truman of the Nottingham Club in his XK Jaguar. 
Uh, third position and quite a way back is Pilkington of the Sheffield and Hallamshire Club, also driving an XK Jaguar. The Andrew family of the former dye works at Bull were a sponsor of the Nottingham Sports Car Club. They were later to become involved with the club's contribution to the opening of the road racing circuit at Mallory Park in Leicestershire. Denia Andrew recalls some further memories of Gamston. I remember distinctly Nancy Binns in her Riley Sprite, of course. And uh, another lady driver, Mrs. Pannell, was, was driving a supercharged uh, Aston Austin 7 Ulster. And you may also be interested to know that Mike Hawthorne uh, had his first race with the Nottingham Sports Car Club at Gamston. I remember seeing him race at Aintree and he always wore a bow tie. <laughs> What sticks in my mind is that wonderful driver we had turning up in a TT Riley and later becoming the first world champion. Mm. In fact, the great Mike Hawthorne. Oh, yes. Because he, he came to our earliest meetings in that TT Riley and later went on to become world champion. Hawthorne in the Riley having built up a considerable lead in, in race two. He's swinging into the bottom corner past the straight now. I should think he's at least... Oh, a thousand yards in front of number 45, Stokes in the Riley, followed by another Riley, number 96. of lap one, we have the HRG of Ruddock leading, followed by Kent Shipside in his special TDMG. Charlie Jupiter in third spot. Next HRG running down to the uh, to the finishing banner, closely followed by Kent Shipside again in the one and a half in the one and a quarter MG. But Ruddock wins quite comfortably, with Ken, Ken coming in in the TDMG to take second spot. Now third position. I think it's going to be taken by Grimley in the Jarrett Jupiter. Yes, here he comes now, coming up to get the chequered flag now for third position in the in the Jarrett Jupiter. That's it. Here comes John Dalton in the TCMG, the modified X Phillips one, swinging into the corner now, taking a four-wheel drift, he's swinging round. He's closely followed by Hawthorne in the one in the 1100cc Riley. HRG also swinging into the corner, not quite as fast as Dalton, followed by 65 of TCMG, nearly took the, the bins with him there. A whole bunch of cars now, HRG, MG, another HRG, two more TCMGs, well it's MG, followed by Hawthorne Riley. John Dalton still leading from the Hawthorne side, he's coming into the barrels now, he just pulled out, he's got a four wheel trip there. bunch of cars headed by number 65 TCMG, 69 HRG, and another TC, HRG 109, MG's taking very, very wide there, they might be in trouble. This corner, but he doesn't need to get the edge on him. Here comes John Dalton now. He's won this heat, I think, very, very closely followed by Hawthorne. It's a very, very fine drive, John, and Hawthorne as well. I showed you were the heats of the 1500cc sports class race. We're now showing you the final of that race. And here we have the cars coming into the first corner on the first lap. A whole bunch of them all swinging round here. One MG just taking over a barrel there, but he's straightened up. He's coming round. He's all right again. Doesn't need to be any undue damage. Then Shipside leading the field with John Dalton and Hawthorne in very, very close attendance. This looks like being a truly wonderful race. Here's Ruddock's HRG swinging into the corner and away again. Ken Shipside still leading. Still leading, swinging into the corner, followed by Hawthorne and John Dalton. Drifting into this corner at high speed. 
Uh, Ruddock on the HRG still holding fourth place. Ruddock in fourth place. Ruddock in fourth place now. well in the lead, drifting the corner, very, very nice, very, very nice control slide here. It really is measuring well. Now here comes Hawthorne, absolutely right on his tail, John Dalton. It's going to be very difficult to see who can make these up. Now number four, Ruddock, here comes Ruddock, number four in the HRG. A bunch of cars coming into the corner here, all very, very fast. Now this should be very exciting. We hope nobody has any spells though, but still, it's nice to see a bit of thrills occasionally. HRGs and MGs absolutely fighting it out, with the Jupiter bringing up the rear. initiative came from and thinking back into the late 20s and 30s there was a very famous Nottingham son named Sir Henry Birkin uh, it was Birkin's the uh, lace manufacturers he became of course Tim Birkin associated with Bentleys and more etc etc he wrote a very good book called Full Throttle post World War II I met a man named Pat Stilley who was a member of Nottingham Sports Car Club a founder member and he said to me one day, would you like to come to Gamston with me? I'm going to be racing there. And I said, yes, I'd love to come. And he said, well, before you do, you must read Full Throttle. This is the sort of Bible that you had to read to understand motor racing. The preparation of the former airfield for racing involved extensive organisation. Former Marshal David Cope illustrates some of the problems. Well, my earliest recollection of Gamston was being taken out on the Ericsson van very early on a Saturday morning and on a Monday morning to lay out and service the field telephone equipment. So at the 11th hour, Pat said, I'm not racing, I'm going to do the commentary. And we're going to be doing it from a haystack. Will you keep a lap chart for me? So I said, yes, OK. So we arrived at Gamston on this very wet and windy day. And I learned the first thing about motorsport. You, you get up at the crack of dawn for it. From there, I started helping Pat Stilley. We went to Gamston, laid out the field telephone circuit and serviced it during the day. After that one day, I was hooked. And I quite enjoyed it. And from that, that started my career in commentating, which eventually then took us to Mallory Park. And we did, I did every commentary at Mallory Park until the, the club lost control of it. Then I was invited back to Silverstone and became the resident commentator at Silverstone. Through that I got a contract with ITV, working with Tony Brooks for two years, and then doing all the Grand Prix right up to the early 90s. I think I did about uh, 18 Grand Prix altogether. I helped Alf Natras in the scrutineering, learned an awful lot about scrutineering from Alf. Well, here's a dirty one, we'll give it a good coat of looking over. And if a car turned up clean, well, that looks better. There were no scrutineer tags in those days, until it was past scrutineering, didn't paint the number on it. If you hadn't got a number on it, it didn't get on the track. Well, the marshal was pretty hectic in those days because you had to be adaptable and able to do most things. I remember one of the first jobs we had when we got there was sweeping a lot of the loose gravel from the corners. I used to be in race control or uh, doing the programmes. I was involved with the flag marshalling during the actual racing. Just spun round on the corner here, this looks dangerous, now he's getting out of the way. He's motoring round the back of the barrels, trying to get off the course, marshals waving flags. Now there's a lovely story someone once told me about you in an aeroplane with a red flag. Would you like to tell us about that? <laughs> well, Ernest will bear me out on this one. We used to be on Gamston Corner, which from uh, where they started there was a bit of a hump and it used to come down to Gamston Corner and the clerk of the course came down the middle and said would, I, would we stop the race because there was this aircraft wanted to come and I stood out in the middle of the course waving this red flag and everybody stopped which yeah. was the correct thing to do in those days. Mr Al Porcher, uh, Al if you were a member in the, the early days of the club if you'd like to tell me a little bit about that and when you started please. Yes, round, I would think it was possibly round about 1950, it might even have been, it had been a year before or a year after. Uh, in those days I was, uh, I was a salesman with uh, Romeo and 
uh, we were able to assist the club quite a bit in those days because we used to lend them a duplicating machine, sometimes a typist and sometimes they provided their own typist to do the stencils, so that these were run off on the machines and the, and the uh, uh, results of the events were able to be distributed directly after the meeting. We used to go around because they provided the marshals with a packed lunch at those days. As a matter of fact, my activities really were mainly marshalling. Uh, flag marshalling usually. Number 67 is Gilly Tyra, who raced that mo much modified BMW. This shot gives you the front view of a very, very famous white Fraser Nash BMW, and here I have with me Mr. Gilbert Tyra from Liverpool, the owner. Well, Gilly, it's very, very nice having you up here again at Gamston. How are you finding things today? Oh, well, not too bad, but I think it's getting a bit worn out now. It doesn't seem to be going quite as fast. Well, I don't know. This motor car goes pretty rapidly, considering its age. I know uh, it's, it's got quite a history attached to it. Uh, I tell you, there's one thing we would like to know. Uh, how you managed to extract such phenomenal speed from a two-litre and supercharged motor car? Oh, I don't know. It just happens. <laughs> well, there must be some secret. Uh, it, or is it too secret that you can't tell us? No, it's... Uh, it just goes. It just goes? Yeah. You think probably that the aerodynamic body has got a lot to do with it? Well, I think it's all due to the mechanic over there. The man who worked oh, on it hard. Who in the picture? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I think we must hold Sam responsible for oh, its speed. It. You put the clearance yeah, on it, do you? Just do that. Well, what sort of maximum speed do you think this car will do? Oh, well, in Belgium it was doing 134. For sports cars up to 2 litres. Here we have Tyra's Milamigna BMW leading the field, coming into the top hairpin, taking it in a very nice four-wheel slide. Now, Tyra is closely followed by Fraser Nash, number 61, also measuring very rapidly. And here comes Tyra now. He's built up a really commanding lead in the BMW, swinging into this corner very, very nicely indeed. Here comes Ruddock into the top hairpin in his HRG. He at present, at present is lying in third position. Now, followed closely... Uh, by Ken Shipside in the TDMG, which is running remarkably well. Now behind him, we have a Fraser Nash BMW number five, which is driven by Lady Mary Grosvenor. Now we're showing you the start of the two and a half litre and supercharged sports car race from Rufford Corner. And as they accelerate away, it's John Walton in the Fraser Nash that leaps into the lead, followed by David Clark and Tyra passing on the outside. Lap two, lap two, and it's John Walton in that pale blue Nash, still leading, Tyra in second place and trying all he can to get by, but I don't think he's going to do it this time. Just look at them take this corner. and it's still John Walton leading Gilly Tyre in this blue Fraser Nash and tries he might, Tyre can't make up the gap. David Clark in third position here. Four, lap four, and it's still John Walton, Gilly Tyre and David Clark and this is the best race I've seen at Gamston. Markers led by White House's Aston Martin 2 litre, leading a Fraser Nash BMW of the old type and a Healy. What an exciting race. Tyra has just managed to get past John Walton on the straight, and they're coming down to take the chequered flag neck and neck, but I'm afraid Gilly, yes, Gilly's just done it by a few lengths. And in third position, we've got David Clark in his Fraser Nash. Here they are coming round the corner. Just look at them. What a wonderful race. A really wonderful race. How's the car going anyway? Oh, we, we, it's going very nicely at the moment. We did uh, quite well at Old Car yesterday. Did you? Good. Good. Uh, how many events have you entered for today? Um, just the two, the MG and the up to 1500. The up to 1500. I saw that you were in one or two other events in the programme, but you've decided um, against that, have you? Well, I, I don't think I shall strain the poor little thing more than I have to. But... Here comes John Dalton now. He's won this heat, I think. Very, very closely followed by Hawthorne. It's a very, very fine drive, John. And Hawthorne as well. Uh, the 4CL Maserati, which is uh, being driven by J.B. Green. 
It is the same Maserati, I believe, that was entered at Silverstone last week. Uh, yes, it didn't run. It didn't run, no. Did, what trouble did you have with it there? Uh, big end. Big end. Oh, that's rather unfortunate. Well, we hope you don't have that today. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, tell me, this is x Parnell Medicar, is that correct? Uh, yes, it is. It is. It has a 4CL T engine and a 4CL chassis. Yes, that is right. What have you lapped at today? Any particular... Very slowly, I should Very think. Slowly. I don't know. Well, you're still running <laughs> in the big end, are you? Uh, no, but it's blowing off to the blow-off valve. Oh, well, that's just one of those bank. things that happens occasionally, you know. Very nice to see Mike Birchall here with his Cooper again. How, tell me, how's the car going today? Um, well, very well. Uh, I think it'll be all right in the race. I hope it will, anyway. Yes, well, your race is number three, isn't it? That's right, yes. Uh, I believe you were down at Brands Hatch the other day. Yes, on Whit Saturday. Oh, mm -hmm. how'd you get on? Uh, well, we got uh, second in the uh, heat and sixth in the final. Sixth in the final, yes. Mm. That's, that's quite good, really, you know, because, I mean, there's all the 500cc stars there. <laughs> And you had quite a successful meeting here on Easter Monday, I believe, as well, didn't you? Uh, yes, yes, I got um, second and a third. A second and a third. Well, that's mm. better than nothing, isn't it? Oh, yes. Well, we wish you uh, a very successful day's racing. This is race number six, uh, up to 3,000 3, cc. It looks like another ghillie tire. The next position in this race is, is held by car number 26. An Alta driven by Bolton. Two Healy's coming into the corner here. Flint in the uh, Jaguar engine MG and Barry Edwards in his Healy. The saloon driven by Webster touring into this bottom corner here. The car certainly seems to hold the road very well, followed by a Fraser Nash BMW. Now we have a Vauxhall Velox coming in. Hardly the sort of car for this event, but nevertheless motoring well. Bunch of cars coming into the corner. Two Healy Silverstones, followed by the Alta. Here comes the Alta now. Start of the MG only race, a handicap event. Now the first man away is Dick Panel and his 745 cc MG, who we see now. <laughs> Real racing style. All the back markers and the faster cars getting away now. With Flint leading on his two and a half litre Jaguar engine MG, drifting into the corner here, and a whole bunch of them coming round in one fell sweep. Just listen to them. Here comes Ken Shipside. He's on scratch with the. Uh, the MGTD Special. This is a very, very fast car, and he's already won one race today. It's certainly motoring very, very well. Got three cars, two TCs, and a TD swinging into the bottom corner here, very, very fast. Followed by another bunch of TCs. Absolutely neck and neck. This is a really wonderful race. It's going to be a, a top up as to who's going to be the, in the first position here, but David Truman really is driving magnificently. It is XK Jaguar. We have Peacock leading into the, into the top bend, followed by Sprague and the XK Jaguar, followed by, very closely by Howard, also an XK, a, XK Jaguar. Howard appears to have gained a little bit here. He's right on Sprague's tail as they take this top corner, very fast. something really exciting. The race for the unlimited sports car, the final. We've seen some exciting races in the heats. Well, this final's going to beat the lot, I think. There's Peacock in the Fraser Nash. Followed by number 75, Jaguar. Howarth in the Jaguar. David Truman in the Jaguar. Trying to pass on the outside, followed by Tyre and a whole host of other cars. This really is something that's really exciting. Down for the second lap with Peacock building up quite a commanding lead in the Fraser Nash. He really is motoring this car. Now, second position is held by Howard in the XK Jaguar, closely followed by Scrag in the XK Jaguar, and Tyra in the Millimeter BMW. Peacock in the Fraser Nash, still in the lead, having just passed the Morris Special, driven by Price. Now, Howard is coming into the corner, also passing the Morris on the inside. He appears to be catching up slightly on Peacock, and certainly is using a terrific amount of acceleration going down the straight here.
HRG swinging out wide past the barrel. This looks very, very dangerous, but I think we'll just get out of the way. There he is, motoring back onto the track again. Showers of dust and sand flying about. Really most exciting. The, uh, the Healy that we got a brief shot of doing a bit of barrel bashing as he came round the last time, but apparently it's not, uh, it's not done any damage to the car and he's touring off now, having the race having finished. John Dalton in his MGE coming up close on this, on this corner. He's just about to take this frozen ash, I think. That's pretty good driving, John. Derek Truman in his XK120 takes this top half in fast. It's slippery and very, very dangerous too. But anyway, he's going around all right, but not much tail wag. Just watch him take the corner now. The old Alba Speed 25 bringing up the rear, but he's, he's pressing on, he's having a good race, he's enjoying himself, motoring around very, very steadily. He's about half a lap behind now. Peter Collins is five and a half litre Cadillac engine Dallard. Here they come, Hugh Howe still in first position, driving well, the car's going well. He's got Ferrero brake linings in, that's a change, isn't it? Well, John Perry, it's nice to see you again after all these years. Thank you. There's Ridge Parnell then, I can remember. He used to come with uh, David Hampshire. Yes. They bought the, uh, one year, they bought the 4 C Formula One 4CLT Maseratis. This was before where everything got so hyped up that uh, they'd allow people to do it. And of course, also, he used to get Mike Hawthorne, Peter Collins, Dennis Poor, uh, Sydney Allard, well, uh, quite a host of them actually, of yes. uh, uh, the people that used to come and race at the, these meetings. I'd like to say a few words about your father, Bill Cope, because yes. he was one of our early racing competitors. Yes, well, father was a very keen motorist, both pre and post war. And immediately after the war, he got hold of a Speed 6 Bentley, which was rebodied in Loughborough. Yes, well, I was just re recollecting one there which was Jeff Crosley with the four and a half litre Invicta and at the side of it it looks like a single roadster which belonged to a fellow called Spowage. He was uh, the manager of Hoolies at that time in Nottingham. Pat Stilly takes over the story again as we reach the height of the motor racing history at Gumston. Here we have the cars lined up for the first event and on the left of the film here you have the Mark 7 Jaguar driven by Mr. Claude Truman which has just toured round and opened the circuit and a truly beautiful car. It is, well, I don't think there is a more lovely car being marketed today with performance that lives right up to all expectations. Now, the cars are lined up for event one here, and in the front row we have number 12, Johnson's HRG, uh, a Bugatti, number one, driven by Jenkinson, and number six, an HRG driven by King. This is an 1100cc car. Now, on the right we have number 49, a Connaught, a uh, 1750cc car, and just behind that, Ken Shipside Special TDMG. Uh, number 20 uh, is a 1939 TA-type MG, driven by Mark Ely. Uh, also, in this event, we have John Dalton's celebrated uh, Le Mans uh, TCMG, a very fast little car indeed. <coughs> start has got his flag up, start has got his flag up, and they're ready for the start of this event of the unsupercharged sports car race, the very first event that Nottingham Sports Car Club called the Bank Holiday Meeting. He's holding the flag up now, he'll be dropping in any second, and we'll see who gets away to the best start. This is going to be an exciting race, it's a very fast car, they're off, just a little bit of the way there now. 49 the Connell in this first race is going quite a good lead. Now the next cars coming along are the Cooper MG driven by Reese, Ken Shipside in the TDMG, very, very closely followed by John Dorn. Just watch them go by here. Here we've got a whole bunch of cars coming over the top of the hill now, swinging down to the bottom, we're finishing straight. The leading Connell is just about to take the back lap at the back leg is here. Look at him sweeping by on the right hand side, he's just about to pass uh, Mark in his MG. Here comes the Cooper MG. 
gunship side in the TD, Jack Reese in the Cooper MG, and John Dalton in the MG. John Dalton is just past Ken Shipside's MG and Ken Shipside himself. Now look at them taking this corner and have a very, very fast control four-wheel drift. The telephoto lens should pick this up quite a bit better for you. It's going to take it, I think, but the Cooper MG is catching up. The Colonel has been running a bit sick. He gets the checkered flag. The second place is taken by Jack Reese in the Cooper MG. Third place by John Dalton after a wonderful race. And fourth is Ken Shipside. Let me show you here a view taken from behind at the start of the Unlimited Sports Car event. Now, in this race, we have some quite rapid motor cars. There's several XK Jaguars, one driven by our own Derek Truman, another driven by Fauchier. We have two five and a half litre Allards with Cadillac engines driven by Collins and Hitchings. Hitchings was the car which I believe was used at Le Mans this year. We have a Alfa Romeo, a two three supercharged, I believe, Alfa Romeo driven by Roll. Uh, also on the back row, on the right hand side here, you can see a cream SS100, three and a half litre, the old pre-war type, and John Edwards Healy. Now we'll later show you the actual start of this heat. The is up, the flag is up, the cars are ready, they're ready to drop their catch in, this is going to be a very, very exciting race. Now we'll just watch them get away. He's got the flag up, I hope the film will run long. Up they're off, look! got Collins in the five and a half litre Cadillac engine Mallard who's leading this heat. Look at him take this corner, he's cutting it close. Very, very neatly, he swings round. Here's the old SS Jaguar, which is, I'm afraid, next but one to the tail of the field, but nevertheless pressing on. Now we have this blue Fader Nash, which is in second position, driven by Walton. Look at him take this corner here. Now Boucher, the Jaguar, is closing up on him. He's in third position, he's coming round here very fast. Then right behind him, We've got number 34, Derek Truman in the XK Jagger. He's cutting the corner close and swinging around, gets into a bit of a spin there. He's going off down the straight. Now we have Roll in the 2-3 supercharged Alfa Romeo, which seems to be motoring very, very slowly. And Hitchings in the Cadillac Allard. Uh, Peter Collins in the 5.5 litre Allard. He's the winner of this heat, taking the top corner here. He's in first position. Man home, Walton in the... Uh, Fraser Nash coming into the corner here, fast, well driven, neat, just look at this. And Boshia is following him and just about to lap this uh, SS100. And now we have Derek Truman, he's fourth in his XK120 Jaguar. Very fast and very neat. Bit of dirt there, but he's all right, press on. of unlimited sports car race. Here's the leader coming into the top Portland hairpin. It's an XK120 Jaguar, followed by Howard in an XK, followed by two more XKs and a Fraser Nash of Newton and an old Bugatti. Lap two, it's Holt in an XK Jaguar. He's increased his lead over Hugh Howarth, but they're giving nothing away. They're both trying might and main. They're all XK Jaguars in the first four, followed by Newton's Fraser Nash and the old Bugatti. Just look at them swing round here. There they all go. Got Holt the leader coming into this top Portland hairpin again. There's been a slight shower since our last shot and the course is very, very tricky. The cars are definitely sliding about. We'll follow him round here and see if he does anything. No, he's held it. Now we've got the second and third men. Hugh Howarth. There's a Jaguar sliding there now. It's, it's been sliding. Oh, she's round. Now it goes down the straight. Watch this Bugatti. No, he's all right. Here's Hugh Howarth in his XK Jaguar, the leader having just gone through, Holt. Hugh Howarth in second position. It's definitely a Jaguar's day at Gams to make. No mistake about it. These cars really are fast. Look at him going up down there on a terrific power slide. event. Here we've got Collins and the JBS leading, taking the top four from Watch him. 
lap four, Peter Collins in the JBS increasing his lead. Portland hairpins, swinging his car around there, cleaning it out, holding it around, they're going to go around the straight there. Second man, Bob Gerard in a Cooper. Peter Collins still leading in his JBS. Jack Reese in a Cooper second. Here's Collins, look at him. Now here's Reese in second place. We'll follow him through the Portland hairpin here. man, Jack Reese, Cooper, takes the fourth in half in again. He's still the same distance behind. Still the same distance behind. Now we've got a car. Look, two cars coming into the corner here, trying to pass. First in May in the Cooper. Then it passes on the outside. It's Bob Gerard. No, he can't make it. Collins, JBS, still leading. Very fast, very neat. Look at him go around here. Uh, Jackie Reese in the Cooper. Oh, I beg your pardon, it's Gerard. He's past Reese. Places. Gerard. Cooper. Very fast, very neat. Still holding on to that second place. Very, very close to the by Reese. There's two cars both coming into his top hopping very fast. Trevelic in his homemade 500 cc car is spinning. He's going to touch the barrel. No, he's not. He's got through and eyes are just passing him. Two Cooper cars swinging into this top bottom hairpin, fast and neat. Uh, there may be a bit of trouble here, no, they've both got away with it, they're all right. One's got his engine come off, it's got a jack engine, I can see that. 54 pulling up fast there. There's the winner, Peter Collins, driving his JBS Norton engine. A very neat, a very well one race. There's Bob Gerard coming up now in his Cooper, in second position. Also a very well run race. We would like to just give you this shot of the Nottingham Sports Car Club's new scoreboard here opposite the, uh, opposite the start. Here we have Mr. Raymond Mays. Now, it's very, very nice to welcome you here to Gamston today, Mr. Mays. I believe it's the first time you've ever come up to this circuit. Yes, it's the very first time, and I'm very happy to be here. Well, that's very nice of you to say that. Uh, we hoped, perhaps, that there might be an odd BRM or two tucked away somewhere. What's the answer to that one? Well, nothing would give me greater pleasure than if we could have bought one. But, as you probably know, we've got two engines which run at Silverson. Yes. And all I can say is that when we get a real team of cars, like Alphas, yes. if we can bring one to this event next year, it'll give us the greatest pleasure. Well, that's very nice of you. And now, on behalf of the various club members who, who are here, tell you now how delighted we were to see how well the cars went to Silverstone. Yes, yeah, very kind. We appreciate it. Nobody more than I do. Yes, well, we realised what a terrific job we must have had to get into the starting line, and it really did. The whole public, the public that were there, really felt it when those green motor cars came through. Well, it's very gratifying to us, because few people realise how we sweated blood. Yes. Well, I would like to say one thing, if I may. Yes. And that is how pleased I am to have my old e type here for Reg Parnell to drive. Oh, yes. We're looking forward to that, and we're hoping, too, that Reg is going to beat his existing map record with your car. I very much hope so. It gives me a lot of pleasure if he did. Well, thank you Thank you very much for the interview, yeah. Mr. Mayor, and we hope to see you again sometime. Very much, sir. Enjoy being here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you're driving around the Mays today, is that right? That's quite right. Oh, well, we hope to see that 90 mile an hour rat record go with a bang. Do you think you'll do it? Well, it all depends upon the weather, really, isn't it? Our thanks to Gamston Aviation for their help. To Derek Truman. Without going down the finishing straight. Can you hear me? Yes. To Pat Stilly. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel very privileged indeed to be able to talk to you. If you've been looking at some of those wonderful films that Bruce has rescued, and a lot of you have got the videos, you'll realise, of course, that those were made 40 or more years ago. To Bruce Widowson. This cloth armband, kindly donated by John Perry, was used by the club at Gamston in 1949. And to Jeff Rowe, who has the final word on motor racing at Gamston. Here is a shot of the cars forming up for the Percy Andrew Formula One race. The fastest cars here are Raymond Mays 2 litre D-type BRA driven by Reg Barnell. Hampshire DRA, Ashmore DRA, Teddy Booker's Cooper. We're going to show you the start. There's one minute to go, and after this, we'll show you the start. Look at 
this. Now this is Major Racing and no mistake. Bill and Bob Gerard is in the third position. He'll take him on the outside here if he can. No, he can't make it. Teddy Booker and his Cooper driving a now wonderful race. He's in fifth position and for an 1100 unblown car that's pretty good. Watch him take this corner. We'll follow him round the corner here. Look at that. Dennis Burr in second position, followed by Bob Gerrard. Bob's closing up. The final lap record at Gamston was held by Reg Parnell, driving Raymond Mays supercharged ERA at a speed of 89.93 miles per hour during the 1951 Percy Andrew Trophy race.